So I apologize if my voice sounds weird as hell. This is my second video of the night. I don't do that very often because my voice dies quite quickly. But um, this is kind of a continuation from my last video about the whole drama that's going on at the moment about goth clothing and all of that being too expensive. Um, and the fact that, yeah, people are brushed off by YouTubers with the whole, oh, just DIY it, just go to the thrift store while most YouTubers are flouncing around in brand name gothic clothing and it's all a bit hypocritical and, and there's all of that. Um, so what I want to, what I want to show you are the ways, the ways to buy and wear brand name gothic clothing and to make it as inexpensive as possible. Um, so I am going to start by by breaking it down. This is this is going to be a bit discombobulated. Second video of the night. I'm quite tired. But um, basically the main principle of doing this to me is the one item outfit. The one item outfit is what you want to go for. You want to get the basics, the kind of basic staples of your wardrobe. You want to get that shit for cheap. And then you have one kind of statement piece, which is a brand name piece. So to start with, the, the, the wardrobe staples. Let's start with shoes. The shoes that I have, I am not a gigantic shoe whore. I own two pairs of kind of proper goth boots, one of which I bought before the millennium. The other one I got in 2011 with my student loan. <laughs> Great use of my student loan there. Pair of goth boots. Um, if you do want a pair of, you know, proper kind of new rocks or demonia or whatever, uh, they, they are expensive. They are crazy expensive. Um, and in this matter, if you want them secondhand, you must be as spider. Spread the net. Catch the boots. Um, eBay. eBay, but you've got to find them in your size. That means you're going to have to be patient. So every freaking day, get on eBay, do the search, do the search, have patience and hope you will get there in the end. That's that's really, really the only way you can hope to get them for cheap. Otherwise, save the fuck up or find a rich relative to ask for Christmas. Um, <laughs> but they're not, they're not really necessary. You do, you do not need to spend loads on goth boots. And I personally would never buy the kind, of, <laughs> you know I don't like Killstar, but when it comes to their boots, I have nothing against their boots. I just would not buy footwear generally speaking, from somewhere like Killstar or Dolls Kill, places like that, because the shoes they do, they're usually just kind of clunky platforms or, you know, slightly winkle pickery things, just clunky kind of black boots. When it comes to that kind of shit, you do not need to be spending the kind of money that they're asking. Um, the ones I have at the moment, I have got, I will put up some pictures and things, I've got my studded little flat kind of Chelsea boots, which are everywhere at the moment. I looked the other day, they are on eBay, they are on Amazon still. Um, it's a little bit harder to find them in suede. Um, I do recommend if you see a pair of cheap slightly gothy studded boots if you can get them in fake suede they always look more expensive <laughs> they always look nicer so those are my current just kind of rattling around driving boots um then i've got my kind of like victorian looking chunky boots which are very very comfortable they came from amazon for about 18 pounds um and i think i've seen them still on amazon although again not in the suede um but the thing i love about amazon with boot shopping is that you can see the comments and you can see if people have said these boots are comfortable as such i have those pair and i, I have another pair um which are both really comfortable and i can walk in them for ages and uh, and it's it's opened opened my world as far as wearing heels because a shitty outfit you put a pair of heels on suddenly you look fancy as fuck I'm, I'm realizing that this year and it's a beautiful thing so I've got those and I've also got a pair of slightly kind of winkle pickery pointy boots which I got at Primark about a decade ago and then I stuck rhinestones all over them so when it comes even to kind of winkle pickers and things you don't necessarily need to go and shell out for goth pikes and all of these things you can find pointy toed boots in in most kind of cheap retailers, Primark or whatever, you can usually find sort of near winter, near the cold seasons, you can find pointy boots and you can stick studs in them. You can probably find some little bat charms and stuff to stick all over them if you want that. You, you don't need to shell out crazy money for, for all of these things that, yes, I would like a pair I actually used to used to own a pair of winkle pickers that, that were glossy and black and they had bats as buckles, but the toes kept poking holes in my skirts and it was getting on my tits so I 
sold them. Uh, I regret that. But anyway, shoes, you know, basically shoes, you, you can get decent looking, elegant kind of black heels and studded boots and things. you can get them on Amazon, you can get them on eBay. So moving upwards, trousers are the next thing that I have, I have lately been really, really excited by. And trousers, yes, obviously, th thrifting, thrifting and DIY, all good. Um, I, d I don't really want to talk about those because, you know, because people do talk about them so much. And, uh, and when it comes to DIY, sometimes it could be a big hassle and you can't really be asked. But I would say as far as DIYing goes, I, I, as I've said before, buy it and diet. Go colourblind when you go to cheap shops. If you go to a thrift store or you go somewhere like Primark, colourblind because you can dye things black. So if you find a pair of nice jeans or a nice t-shirt or a nice cardigan or whatever and it's the wrong colour, buy it and dye it. You can do that. Uh, that's, that's, that's kind of the easiest, cheapest DIY thing to give you here. Thrift stores, I almost never watch people's thrift hauls because what is the point? You know, what they found in their thrift store, it's not like they can link me and I can go and buy it too. It's, it's completely random what you find in a thrift store. So I don't see the point in thrift hauls really. Um, but as far as thrift stores go, again, you must be a spider. You, the thing is that you've got to be in it to win it with thrift stores. So every time you go past a thrift store, even if you were in there yesterday, if you have got five minutes to spare, go in and have a look. Because it is, it is all about regularity and frequency. If you are in there all the time, you will find some cool things. Like I will just quickly show you a leather jacket I got the other day. This leather jacket, it's pretty much identical identical to the things you see for about $150 or more on Killstar. I got it for £7. It is by a Parisian label. It is pristine. I am in love with it. And, uh, and that was all because I was walking past a thrift store and I thought, ah, I've got five seconds to kill. Let's pop in. And uh, behold, behold the most beautiful thing I have owned in so long. But um, but yes, returning, returning to trousers. That's where we were. We were on trousers. Trousers, I am lately finding that fast fashion retailers yes i know i know they, they might be a, uh, dubiously evil that's that's a whole other whole other issue but uh we're talking about cheap and um <laughs> cheap fast fashion retailers i have lately fallen in love with fashion nova um also the the Shein one i don't know if i'm saying it right but anyway i'll link to them both below um if you go on these, they are mainstream brands of fast fashion most of their stuff you're gonna fucking hate but they have a copious amount of clothing some of it is is really quite kind of slutty looking that means some of it is black and slick and sexy so if you put in search terms like black lace or vinyl or black pvc leatherette fake leather black lace is my favorite to put in you you get a lot of things so to show you some of the things i've found trouser wise i have found a pair of vinyl trousers i have wanted shiny black inky gorgeous trousers like this for so long and usually buying from goth brands like lip service you're looking at about $80 or more for a pair of trousers I got these for about I think $23 from Fashion Nova I love them I love them I love them then there is also the the kind of vinyl and lace pair I got from Fashion Nova which ah oh, oh, these trousers are beautiful they're studded they have lace they're shiny because of the lace they're actually not that sweaty to wear because vinyl on its own is very sweaty but the lace ones they're not sweaty to wear I wore them to a VMV Nation gig recently and they were so comfortable ah oh, ah oh, I love these trousers then there is um the pair that I got from Shein for for about something ridiculous, like eleven pounds or something, um, which are these these kind of like camo print, slightly shiny looking gothy trousers. They are some of the most flattering jean type trousers I have had in ages, and they're really comfortable, and I adore them. So I am I am all about these for kind of staples for just wardrobe staples that are kind of slick and elegant looking. Yes, yes, yes. Cheap, fast fashion things. So moving up to accessories, um, I will link below my videos I've made about DIY goth before because I did do one all about um, accessories because DIYing accessories is the easiest thing, really. You, you don't really need to have any skill and it's, it's quite fun. 
um, because, you know, to, to just, just chop something up, add stick studs in it. I made this one. Um, you can get quite creative. It, you don't have to spend a lot on materials. Um, I just stick mine together with Velcro or even a safety pin. I, I, don't, I don't get technical. I barely do any sewing when it comes to accessories. But also, if you want more elegant, gothy, expensive looking things like this guy, whenever I wear this guy, everybody asks me where I got it from. It was eBay. It cost me about two pounds. Um, literally, eBay, you just put in gothic lace choker. You will find fuck tons of things that look like this. I've also got this one. Uh, which is a bit newer. Which way round does it go? It goes this way. Um, but yes, lots of kind of elegant, lacy, gothy things you can get from, from eBay. And uh, usually they're free shipping from China, so it takes like a month to come, but it, it you know, it costs peanuts, like literally about a pound, two pound, three pound. Um, so that's, that's your basic accessories. I mean, gloves as well. You can get kind of like black satin gloves and things like that from eBay for, for like a couple of quid. Um, you can, you can often find like horns and things like that. Uh, uh, Rebels Market. Rebels Market can be very random with pricing. I found some quite good leggings and things like that that are very cheap on Rebels Market. And yes, things like horn headbands and stuff like that can be good on Rebels Market. But if something does seem high priced, have a hunt around eBay and things as well because Rebels Market being a marketplace, some people do take the piss with pricing. Um, so moving on to the, to the actual buying of the the designer things, the you know, the punk rave, the kill star, whatever. The first thing to do, and this does slightly exclude the male dressers out there, I will try and cover you towards the end, but the first thing to do, if you wear female clothes, when you go on these shops, um, on these shops? When you go on these sites, my favourite personally are Phantasmagoria and Kate's Clothing. Those are the two kind of gothy websites I usually use because of the fact that they have the brands I like and they have a comprehensive range of sizes. So many of the more kind of Asian um, punk rave sellers, oftentimes the ones that Black Friday is, is sponsored by and ones that I've been sponsored by too. Stop doing that when I'm making videos! Do you not know how annoying it is? Um, <laughs> no, some of the more Chinese ones, they don't have a very comprehensive range of sizes. So you see something, you go, wowee! And it turns out they've only got it in one size, which statistically isn't likely to be yours. Phantasmagoria, Kate's Clothing, they're very good with all the sizing. Kate's Clothing, if you do a restock request, they will usually get on it very quickly. Um, so I do recommend those. But anyway, the first place you want to go to is dresses. Do not look at separates, ideally, because, you know, if you're going to buy a top and a bottom, that's two items to make an outfit. Therefore, the amount you're going to pay is going to be considerably higher. If you want to get an outfit quickly for cheap, you want to do a one-piece thing. So dresses. I, dresses are the place I always go first. Even though I kind of like boy clothes, I always go to dresses first because it is an immediate, instant, new outfit. Um, and then what I want to show you is dresses that are flexible. Um, if you can find dresses that you know you can kind of alter the style with, you can do more with it. It's more than one outfit in, in one item. So the first one I want to show you is a jawbreaker dress that I've had for years, but I'm pretty sure I have still seen it on websites. You can wear it. This is the way I usually wear it with the front of the skirt hitched up and the back down. And, um, and that's my favourite way to wear it. But you can also tuck up the back of the skirt and then you have a little kind of pom-pom fluffy thing and it's suddenly a completely different looking dress. <gasps> And you can also wear it with all the bits down and then you have a, a very tragic looking sort of swooshy swooshy walking around the graveyards type dress. Um, and then if you've got a dress like this you can stick all manner of things over it. I was going to show you this with um, with a cheap steampunk corset I got from eBay for about £12 but I can't find it. So instead here it is with a chain thing that I got I think from Rebels Market for about £11. Um, this thing looks really good over the top of absolutely anything. I'm planning to cut the back off because I don't like how the back looks. Um, but, you know, you can throw corsets that are cheap, you can throw chain things that are cheap over the top of dresses, and actually even if you get a dress that doesn't have a skirt that, that can be hitched up and, and adjusted like that one, safety pins are your friends. You can do this sort of thing with, with all sorts of long skirts. You can hitch them up, or you can sew a couple of ties on like this one's got, and you can tie it up and do things like that. So don't be afraid to fiddle about with the things you get. Another dress I've got that is very adjustable 
is my favourite dress in the fucking world. This beast. Um, this is the ultimate goth princess dress. I feel like ever. I absolutely adore it. I wore it on Halloween and I'm so in love with this dress that I own it in two sizes. Um, but this dress, obviously, it's a bit ridiculous for, for every day. You're not going to wear it on an everyday basis. But the thing is, it comes in two pieces. So this is the bodice. You can wear it with a jacket and suddenly you've got something completely different. Or you can wear it without a jacket. And again, it's a lot more wearable. It's a lot more kind of day wearable. It's still fancy, but it's not quite so ridiculous. Um, and then the other part, I'm afraid I didn't film this because I was exhausted, but it came with a little tutu thing. And the tutu is so versatile. You can stick it with anything. You can actually put it under other skirts and, and turn them into big kind of crazy ball gowns. It's a really, really versatile dress. So bear this in mind when you're looking at dresses, things that if they do come in multiple pieces, I am all about that shit. Like if, you know, if there's a separate corset bit over the top, if there's two layers, there's so much more you can do with that. And that, that is, that is much more useful. But um, other than dresses, if you've got your basic staples, if you've got a few like long skirts that you've thrifted, if you've got some trousers that you found from like fast fashion places, or if you are quite happy to just wear tattered tights on the bottom and a, you know, and a pair of little shorts or whatever, a top can, can really be the focal point of your outfit. So this top I want to show you quickly. I got this on eBay for about, I think, £19? Um, because eBay, eBay is a good thing to look at for brand name gothic stuff. I do regularly, again, being a spider, a spider, cast the web and wait. Um, <laughs> I regularly get on eBay and put in punk rave as the search term because I have managed to get brand new punk rave items for £8. Um, I got, yes, I'll show you, I got this top for £19 um, and I absolutely love it. It's really, really elegant. It goes with everything and um, you can get these things quite cheaply if you extend your tentacles into eBay on a regular basis and just keep an eye out. You often will find that the sizes are a little bit random. Sometimes you won't find it in your size. That top, um, I would have bought it in a size bigger, but uh, I, I think it works. I think I can, I can get away with it. Um, so so you, you do want to keep an eye out. I mean, I, I don't know about Killstar on eBay. I dare say, I dare say it happens. It's not something I look for, but I would say all the, all the big goth brands, they are sometimes going to end up on eBay, brand new, by you know, websites that are trying to advertise themselves because the the top I just showed you, I got it from Violent Delights um, and they put some of their things on eBay for very low prices just to advertise their website to try and sucker you in to buy the more expensive things. Um, but that's great if you just snag the cheap things, it's all good. Now, I do feel I have to briefly address the slight elephant in the room when it comes to brand name gothic clothing and it comes to inexpensive gothic clothing and that is size. Um, it is so much easier to find all of this stuff and to put together a cheap, elegant looking gothic outfit if you are relatively slim. Um, as has been mentioned by many YouTubers, Skullgirdle particularly, that um, if you are plus sized, things like Punk Raven and Killstar, they do not exist in your size. They just don't. Um, you know, even at my biggest size, which wasn't huge, um, I couldn't, I couldn't get into Punk Rave's biggest size. I couldn't. Um, so the, it is somewhat exclusionary to the bigger goths. But also when it comes to thrifting and stuff, even that you are going to find so much easier if, if you are reasonably slim. Because at this point I can walk into my thrift store and, and I can buy anything there, you know, because the smallest sizes is really what what fits me but it's very easy to take something that's big and make it smaller you know you can just safety pin it at the back you can do a bit of sewing um it's it's very easy to shrink things it's very difficult to make them bigger and also you will find in thrift stores most of the really funky gothy stuff is in smaller sizes because i think skinny people their turnover of clothes is faster. I, th I think they just buy and sell more clothes because they don't have body confidence issues. You know, going to shops for them is all it is fun. But um, if you're bigger and you have hang-ups about, oh, I don't want to see myself in the mirrors, like, oh, nothing looks good on me, you don't buy so many clothes. So a lot of the really kind of fun, funky young stuff in thrift stores is it going to be smaller because young people who are wearing gothy stuff are, are often slimmer. And even if it's an older goth throwing out their younger stuff, it's 
often going to be stuff that doesn't fit them. It's it's going to be quite small. You know, if, if you're reasonably slim, you, you can put a bin bag on and, and you can kind of make it work. That's harder, as I found out when I was bigger and, you know, and I was shopping and I would have to think, oh, no, uh, that's too tight around the stomach. Like, mm, don't want it to be that short on my legs. There's a lot more eliminations. Whereas if you're skinny and you can get away with anything, it, you, you know, whatever you find on eBay that's cheap, you 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 don't have to think oh but, but that's not gonna flatter me it's like it's cheap i like it i can have it um uh, uh, the, the only thing i can really say is that i personally am so much happier since i have started eating healthily and started exercising particularly like it has taken me to the age of 33 to get over what PE did to me at school, which was to teach me that exercise is horrible, that it's horrible, that it makes you feel like shit, that it's miserable, and you hate it. 33 years old and I finally realised, you know what, actually, exercise makes you feel good. If, if you are happy, if you are happy with your larger body and it's not impacting your health, rock on. But um, I, I, do, I do think in, in all sorts of aspects of life, being reasonably slim and reasonably healthy and reasonably fit is 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 good so there is that and I, I had to say that because it is the fucking elephant in the room when it comes to gothic clothing it is it is it has to be said and um you know so yeah if gothic clothing is a bitch for you because of your size mm, look into healthy ways to, to try and do something about it and i am making videos about my own kind of weight loss journey and all of that i have made one so far i need to get on with another one but um but anyway good luck on that front if you do decide to embark upon upon making yourself a happier healthier person yes another thing um i want to show you this jacket also is quite a good thing this is just flung over the top of those camo jeans and a t-shirt but it's such a kind of wonderful shapely jacket that you just throw on a pair of heels and that jacket and you immediately have this imposing gothy looking outfit that looks quite swizzy so you you want to look at the pieces you're getting jackets are very versatile too they can particularly if they've got like a long kind of flowy tail piece um it can be it can give you a really nice silhouette even just over a freaking slobby outfit i am all about outfits that you can just fling over a t-shirt and put on a pair of heels and suddenly it's a whole other thing um so for the guys out there i would say the thing to do when it comes to male gothic clothing because male gothic clothing it is harder it is harder to do it cheaply like really the prices for decent male gothic clothing take the piss if you think female clothes are expensive check out the male ones also when you see the adverts particularly by devil fashion um they're kind of painful when it comes to this when they show an advert for gothic menswear unlike like the gothic women's wear where it's just a nice dress you know and, and maybe at most it costs about 80 dollars that's all there is when it comes to the men's gothic stuff they show you a pair of trousers a shirt a waistcoat a jacket a top hat oh, full fucking outfit to get this look and the cost of all of it together must be round about $350 if not more um ways to get around this guys I would say again find some nice trousers that you can use as, as a base find something that you know or DIY something just find a pair of jeans or whatever that are black that are reasonably flattering stick some chains on them stick some safety pins on them um you know or try and do some pinstriping or whatever if, if you want something a little bit more elegant um and then the main thing you want to get yourself is is a decent a decent cravat. You don't necessarily have to have a nice you know fancy ruffly shirt. You can just have a cravat. Um, so look on look on eBay. Maybe get something that you can mod a little bit if you can find some little cameo type things or whatever to stick on the neck piece. Things that you can do, or even just like pin badges, just to jazz it up a little bit. Get a simple cravat, jazz it up with things, stick some chains on, all of that little charms, um, and then really the only expensive item you've got to buy is the overtop kind of jacket you've got the cravat you've got the jeans you've got the jacket you, you've got a fancy fucking outfit without buying the waistcoat the shirt the crazy trousers all the rest of it um but but yes uh men's men's gothic fashion it's so hard to find anything nice and when you do the prices are silly but yes in essence you you want to focus on 
a one-piece outfit you know not not looking at oh my god but this this would go really well with this I mean sure if you know if it's after your birthday or whatever and you've got money to blow that's when you can go okay I'm gonna get that skirt with that top and that's gonna look really nice with that I'll get the jacket and, uh, but on on a general I've got about fifty dollars to spend uh, you want to be looking at, at one one thing that's gonna make a sort of spectacular outfit or hopefully be quite flexible but yeah I guess the final thing to end with is just when it comes to gothic clothing and how expensive it is the main thing to remember about gothic clothing is that it is not fast fashion and you are not necessarily gonna be going oh I've worn this people have seen me in this once well I've got to sell it now I don't think most goths think like that I have never had anyone walk up to me in a club and say could you wear that outfit a lot? I've seen you in that like a whole bunch of times. I've never had that happen and I pretty much never sell my clothes. <laughs> One of the things that uh, that made me laugh about Fright Summer's video about goth clothing being too expensive was she was saying, you know, you, you can't be buying all these things and keeping them. You, you're going to look like a hoard. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking, dude, you would shit if you saw my room. Um, because I am. I am a complete hoarder when it comes to clothing. Gothic clothing, if it fits me and I even vaguely like it, even if I haven't worn it in years, I, I, I'm not parting with it. So I do. I own clothing from the 90s still um, that, I, that I love, that I wear. Some of it's a bit tattered, some of it's a bit torn. It just makes it look more kind of elegant and gothic and I love it and I keep it so gothic clothing do see it it's more of an investment thing and if you are a younger goth when it comes to creating a big lavish extravagant wardrobe the fact is it is going to take time you know unless you win the lottery it is going to take time it took time for all of us and I do remember you know my my first gothic outfit I bought it all from the Black Rose in Camden it was like after my birthday I went down there with like a hundred pounds feeling like I had all the money in the world I bought a black and purple PVC mini skirt I bought a crushed velvet top with vampire written in red across the front and it had traily cobweb sleeves. I bought a pair of black and purple striped tights, which I actually still have. Um, and that was my outfit. That was my one gothic outfit and I wore it everywhere. <laughs> and, um, I, I, you know, and you, you go from there, you add piece by piece and it, it does. It takes a long time to build up a big lavish gothic wardrobe it does it takes a long time but that's okay you know so when you buy something it's it's yours it's yours forever that's that's the thing it's it's not about oh you know that's so last season I can't wear that anymore it's it's yours forever you know goth stuff fashions don't really particularly change um so it, you know it's it's kind of an investment kind of is and also I mean re resale values on gothic clothing particularly kind of stuff like punk rave and all of that if you do want to sell it on again and you, you haven't trashed it, um, you are going to be able to sell it on for a pretty decent price. So that, bear that in mind too, that if you if you do find that you do want to kind of rotate your wardrobe like it's fast fashion and you do want to have new things every season, the resale values are going to be quite good. Like it's a pain in the ass, but Depop and all of that, you should be able to sell it on pretty well. So, oh, I've talked for a very long time. But anyway, I hope that was vaguely helpful that yes there is a lot you can do with basic staples and one piece you know basic cheap trousers or a thrifted skirt or whatever and one elegant dress or one elegant top or one jacket that goes over everything decent pair of heels that uh, say decent just nice looking pair of heels that you got from Amazon um, and you, you can you can modify a lot of things you can stick chains on them I am hoping to do more DIY videos I do I do have some ideas I've got a bag a bag of chains and, and o-rings and all sorts of things downstairs I've got, I've got, to, I've got to make things with it so uh, I will hopefully give you some more DIY ideas soon because I have been thinking about boots and modifying boots and creating things to dangle off boots and things like that I've, I've got ideas ideas in mind but um but yes basically find something that, that has a lovely a lovely outline if you want something that looks quite lavish something with a lovely outline with a lot of nice detailing if it is adjustable and you can you can kind of fiddle it about and make it look different in different ways then you've got three different dresses in one and that's that's going to be helpful but um anyway i can hear somebody banging on my bedroom door so i am going to go away now i hope that was helpful 
Adam. Night, night. <laughs>